All right, you diddling little duckers, it's time once again to take a swing at the love plums of internet nonsense that is the funny, the silly, and the sometimes really dangerous life hacks. Yes, indeed, you heard me right. Welcome to YouTube. If you use profanities or humor in any kind of way, we we'll take your livelihood and suppress your videos so far that an archaeologist couldn't find them. But if you want to teach a child how to poison themselves with bleach, we're okay with that. Just use some cheery music or something. Yes, welcome back to Life Hacks vs. Life... Lacks. I am really crap at naming videos. If you haven't seen my first one of these, the gist is I'll be pointing out some bonkers and dumb life hacks that in the real world are as useful as Jason Statham's hairbrush. And just so I'm not a completely pedantic paddy, I'm going to alternate them with some actual good life hacks that I've come up with or stumbled across over the years. So you can't say I don't look after you lot. But who looks after you, ducky? I know you're not asking because you don't really care deep, deep down and it hurts. Why, this video's fantastic sponsor, Skillshare, of course. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of fantastic classes for creatives and curious people like yourself. Where you can explore new skills, develop new interests, and dive down the rabbit hole of self-education. As I'm sure you lot already know, I'm a huge advocate of online learning. This glorious channel that you all know and love was built entirely on skills and advice I found by sleuthing through the internet. From the basics of how to edit a video and improve my writing, to some down the road learning like how to get more views on my videos, or how to stop all those fangirls sucking on the windows of my house. I've just finished a fantastic course called Productivity for Creatives by Thomas Frank, which attracted me because... Well, have you seen my upload schedule? It's actually a really good course though that gives you loads of good advice on how to build a good, efficient foundation that makes sure that you can be repeatedly productive. So if you're like me and have to be creative and productive on an ongoing basis, you'll run like a well-oiled machine. The proof will be in the pudding if this video releases much quicker than normal. But that's just a speck on the Kardashians are sort of courses that Skillshare has to offer. They've got everything from animation and web development to music and interior design. If you have an interest you want to pursue, then there's a good chance that they'll have a course to help you on your way. So whether you're looking to battle the boredom, find a target for your creative spark, or to find and join a like-minded community, Skillshare is the place to get your creative ball rolling. And if that's tickled your curiosity and you're fast enough, I've got a link in the description with a cheeky little deal that gives the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And after that, it's only $10 a month. Anyway, let's kick this bad boy off. According to this one, the right way to eat a cupcake is to cut the bun part in two and use your newfound slice to top it to make a kind of cupcake sandwich of sorts. Okay, one. No, this isn't the right way to eat one. You are desecrating the sanctity of a cupcake if you do this. If cupcakes were supposed to be eaten like that, then they'd be sold like that. It's a cupcake, not IKEA furniture. Why would you expect there to be some assembly required? I feel like eating a cupcake like that is a fantastic way to guarantee you're going to blow a wad of buttercream frosting all over your pants when you're biting down and causes the frosting to squirt out like I'm a cupcake, you're a big burly man. And it's a Tuesday. So I have crap vision. If I'm not wearing my glasses or my contact lenses, everything past my nose is about 144p. So over the years, I've picked up little tricks that can help me cope with the little things. For instance, I'm in bed nice and comfy, probably thinking about Jessica Negri blowing the, dip, da, 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 the dandelions in the meadow. Oh, that was close. When I get a message on my phone. Thing is, the thought of reaching for my glasses, rubbing the tiredness out of my eyes and magnifying the brightness of my screen is a lot of effort I'm unwilling to give. And it also runs the risk of waking me up so much that I won't be able to instantly pass out again. I know, somebody call a starving African child and tell them about my plight. But the message on my phone might be important, so I have to reach for my glasses, right? Wrong. Just take a screenshot of the message and zoom in on that image and you'll be able to read it with no problem at all. Doesn't matter how small something is on your screen, this works a treat. And also while I have you, thank your girlfriend for sending me that tip. <laughs> So you have a bottle with a cork in it, but no corkscrew bottle opener. No worries. Just hammer a nail into the cork most of the way, and then use the claw of the hammer to quickly and easily pull the nail back out, leaving the cork exactly where it was, unscathed and probably laughing at me. Yes, I actually tried this before, and it does not work. I even tried it with a screw, thinking it would have more purchase, but I just succeeded in pulling out little shrapnel flakes of cork. In the end, the only thing that really works is to stab the cork with a knife and slowly twist it out. Or if you're like me, simply don't buy drinks with corks in them, because do and watching somebody decork a pressurized bottle for some reason gives me DISPROPORTIONAL ANXIETY! Funnily enough, in the same vein, get a bottle opener keyring. I had no idea how useful it was to have a bottle opener always on hand, and I'm not saying that just because I'm Irish. And it's not just handy for yourself. It's fantastic social lubrication. If you go to a house party with a bottle opener in your pocket, you will be the most popular bloke in the place. It's the male equivalent of having a short skirt, big boobs, and absolutely sopping in daddy issues. 
So you're lost in the wilderness and you need something to take a flame in order to start a fire. No worries, because according to the internet, crisps are the perfect kindling. So just break out that bag of Doritos everybody carries on them at all times in case of emergencies. See where I'm going with this? Why is it more likely that you'd have a pocket full of Doritos than it is that you'd find some dry firewood? Essentially, this life hack is just stating that crisps are flammable. That's a fact, not a hack. And the dumb scenario they put this in to make it sound like it's a hack is even more bonkers. Be like saying, do you need to carry water on a hike but you can't find a bottle? A wet dish sponge can hold up to half a glass. This one's for all my anti-social brothers and sisters out there who hate long, arduous, and more often than not, boring conversations on the phone. Next time somebody calls you and you suspect that they're going to drone on too long, answer the phone by saying this. Hi, real quick before you say anything, my phone's about to go dead. That way, as soon as you're over the conversation, you can just hang up and you won't be perceived as rude. Unless, of course, you then go and make a YouTube video about how you do this, exposing your tactics to them. Ah, shit. We've all been there. You go to use the sticky tape, but you can't find a seam. Well, this life hack says you should stick a bread tab to the end of it when you're using it to make it easier to find in the future. Can you believe this? Honestly, I can't get over the sacrilege of it. How could somebody dare suggest making such an ancient, sacred pastime a rite of passage, a time-honored tradition, easier? I will have absolutely none of this. If you can't find a seam, then it's on. You are now locked in a battle of wills. That sticky tape has insulted your family, kicked your dog, mocked your KD ratio. That sticky tape has f***ed your girlfriend, drank your pint when you were in the toilet, and keeps talking to you when you have headphones in. That sticky tape is the reason your belt loop gets caught in the door handle when you're already in a bad mood. The reason you missed a spot when you were shaving this morning. And the one who left the plug prong side up right next to your bed. So this is personal, and that sticky tape needs to be given the proper hands-on approach. You can't run from your problems and look for an easier way out. You need to face them head-on and assert dominance. None of you jump in. This sticky motherfucker's all mine. This is one I used to use all the time before the world came to a standstill when Chinese Joker finally defeated Batman. If you're planning on spending some time away in a hotel and you don't have or don't want to dish out funds to pay for a movie in your hotel room, simply download a couple of movies, completely legally and put them on a USB drive. A surprising amount of hotel TVs actually have a port and the capability to play movies through USB, saving you a few quid. Also not a life hack, but quite amusing. When you check out, leave your bed covers in a way that it makes it look like somebody's sleeping in the bed so you freak out housekeeping. You can use a wooden spoon to stop a boiling pot by laying it across the top. Okay, the amount of times I've come across this on the internet is insane, so I think I'm gonna have to enlist the help of Real World Ducky. So, Real World Ducky, does it work? Yep. Well then, there we go. Answered once and for all. So real world ducky, will I have you? Do you know of any ingenious, never thought of before life hack that would work to fix this problem? Yep. Okay lad, lay it on us. Got unsightly sticker residue on something that needs removing? Spray it with a little WD-40 and it'll shift away after a couple of wipes. This is also great for removing oil stains, paint over spray, and people you don't like. Well, there you mischievous, marvellous mallards go. And I hope you enjoyed it. I know this video is a little bit shorter and lower budget than what my usual videos are, but I want to get more content out to you guys more often, so it's a bit of a trade-off. If you're new here and you enjoyed it, consider subscribing. And if you're not new here, thanks for dropping in again. And I will catch you lads and ladies in the next one.